Hey guys, um, this is an attempt um, to give you an alternate way to picture converting angles to principal arguments. This video assumes that um, um, what an argument is. Um, if not, very briefly, it is to do with complex numbers and you come across uh, principal arguments in complex numbers when, for example, a complex number is written in polar form um, you you then attempt to write this in principal arguments. Um, very briefly, very quickly, um, just a very rough rough guide of where we start. All angles are measured from your positive x axis. All anti-clockwise angles, so they go that way, are negative. Okay, so they are, sorry, positive. And all clockwise angles are regarded as negative. So again, this assumes that you have some knowledge of of this. Um, so we will attempt to do some of the, some questions, and I'll, I think it's best to start with some examples. So suppose you've got a three pi over four. Now you've got to decide if if that three pi over four is in its principal argument form or not. Um, I'll give you an example like, you know, you could have a complex number z where it will be equal to say 2 cis um, 3 pi over 4 and you've got to decide if that is written in its proper conventions. Now principal arguments, you know, by convention they need to be written between, so there should be negative pi, um, theta and positive pi, I'm very sure you've seen this before. It basically says that your angle or the principal argument has to be between negative pi and positive pi when we write it. Now negative this 3 pi over 4, a good way to visualize this is you draw a quadrant and you think about this pi. Okay, so forget about that 3 for the moment. Think about that pi and because it is positive, I'm thinking about this this angle here. And I want you to think about taking that pi, which is that, and cutting it into four pieces. So essentially you're taking the pi and dividing it into four pieces, right? Which means you're cutting it into four pieces. Um, so if you visualize that, that three pi over four, well, if this whole thing is four pieces, you know, three pieces comes to about there. And therefore you know that this is one pi over four. And therefore that is your three pi over four. Um, basically means that this angle is within those conventions. So you go, okay, my argument is this. Okay, we'll look at an example, number two, uh, where this this angle will not be um, a principal argument. So for example, take negative seven pi um, over six. Now, where is this? Where does this fall? Let's draw our quadrants again. And from my positive x-axis, because it's a negative angle, I will try and um, visualize this bit here. Okay, so I'm taking my negative pi and I'm cutting it into six pieces. So you think about this, so that is all six pieces, but I need seven. So that six pieces go all the way up to here and I need another of that six pieces. So I need another one sixth. So that becomes pi over six. You know, this is six. Now you've got seven. Now, as you can see, this whole angle goes over the 180 or the pi. Therefore, I should write this or take this as my principal argument, an anti-clockwise angle that goes from here to here. Now we have this, we have said this that we've taken the pi and divided it into six pieces, right? So this whole thing is six pieces. If that is one piece, well, that should be about five. So 5 pi over 6, and notice I've written it as a positive um, angle because it is measured anti-clockwise. Okay, so this, this whole notion of um, thinking in terms of cutting it into pieces and then visualizing where this is seems to be a little bit easier. We'll do a few more examples. Um, another one, which is, say, negative 4 pi over 3. I'm going to be doing it the same way. 
um, drop my quadrants you know that is your positive x-axis it's negative so I'm thinking about my um, clockwise direction here thinking about this pie and taking that that pie and cutting it into three pieces right so this is three pieces but I need four so that means you're going to give us another one piece and that is in third so that is your pie over three remember this is three pieces and that becomes four so that's your angle again you can see it's gone over that negative pi positive pi it's gone over the 180 degrees uh, which is what we, we say pi was um, so this negative angle um, that becomes my um, argument and because this is three pieces I've got one piece here that should be two so you'll have two pi over three and that becomes your argument I'm thinking about another one which is slightly different um, it's got slightly bigger numbers um, let's say we've got 21 pi divided by 17 okay so this is a bit of an interesting one but if you visualize it using your cutting pieces uh, method I think it'll work um, so you're taking a pi positive one this time so you're anti-clockwise um, and, and cutting into 17 pieces so you think about this as 17 pieces okay so now you've got that 17 pieces but you need 21 that means I need another four and you another four pieces let's say come over here so this is your pi over um, another four of these pieces so they, they go here um, that's 17 that's 17 pieces this is another four okay so that makes 21 now you can see this goes over so this will be my principal argument and because this whole thing is 17 there's four in here how many will that will that be well 17 take away four um, which is 13 so 13 pi over 17 okay so and that's it